guys, today we're talking about molecular and empirical formulas. Uh, so we just got done working on percent composition. We're actually going to use that percent composition of each of our elements um, to uh, determine, and we're going to kind of work backwards, to determine um, the molecular and empirical formulas for different compounds. Right? So when we're talking about molecular formulas, we're talking about the kind of compounds that we've seen already, right? Glucose, sucrose, um, methane, butane, those are um, molecules that we've worked with, okay? So what this is, is the actual number of atoms needed for one molecule of a compound. Notice that this is molecule, right? What we're working with today are molecules, not ionic compounds, okay? So the actual number of atoms needed for one molecule. So then we're also going to be looking at empirical formulas because we actually calculate that to get at the molecular formula eventually, but it is the lowest ratio of elements in a compound. So uh, we're, for ionic formulas or for formula units, we always reduce and we're always in the empirical formula version of it. But for molecules, remember we don't reduce and that's because we're representing a real actual molecule. But the empirical formula we do end up reducing, and that's what is considered the empirical formula. It's the lowest ratio of elements. Um, when we're looking at molecular formulas, we can't de determine those in the lab. So when we do our labs on hydrates, we're not going to be actually figuring out the molecular formula. That's why the empirical formula is important, and we're teaching you how to use it to get at the molecular formula, because we actually can determine this in a lab, because we can figure out the lowest possible ratio, and then eventually use some other data to end up determining what our molecular formula is. All right, so just a couple of examples. This first one, you hopefully recognize C6H12O6 from biology and chemistry. We've talked about it. This is glucose, right? This is a molecular formula. It's an actual molecule that we work with, right? You can see that this is not in the lowest ratio, so it's not an empirical formula, right? It's the actual number of atoms in this molecule. Now, if you notice, 6, 12, and 6 are all divisible by 6, right? If you divide them each by 6, you actually break that down or simplify it to C, H, 2, O, right? 6 divided by 6 gives you 1 C. 12 divided by 6 gives you 2 H's. 6 divided by 6 gives you 1 O, all right? So we can see also, here's another compound. We haven't worked with it too much, but this is acetic acid. And we write acetic acid, acid, organic chemistry as CH3COOH. Now, if we were actually looking at the way we talk about compounds and we've seen in chemistry, we might say there's two C's. So this is C2. There's four H's. This is H4. And there's two O's. Two, four, and two is not the simplest or the lowest ratio of elements. These can each be divided by what? By two and that simplifies down to CH2O. Now notice, those are exactly the same formula over there, right? Right, they have the same empirical formula. They are entirely different molecules, right? The actual molecular formula is very different, but multiple different molecules can have the same empirical formula. All right, so it's a one to two to one ratio, essentially. Okay, now that you know the difference between the empirical and molecular formula, I'm going to teach you guys um, some problem solving steps to actually calculate both of those. So first we have to end up calculating the empirical formula and then from that from lab data and then using those figures we can calculate the actual molecular formula. Our first example is a compound is 82.7% carbon and 17.3% hydrogen with a molar mass of 58.12 grams per mole. What is the empirical and molecular formula? So we're being asked to find the empirical and the molecular formula. Now, the first thing that I want to say is that we are dealing with just carbon and hydrogen. So we're dealing with some ratio of carbon to hydrogen, hydrocarbon that we've talked about, and we've dealt, dealt with quite a few of those. So we know there's a lot of possibilities. And our givens are two percentages and our molar mass. Um, so the first thing that you do is these are all the different steps. These are the steps for solving the entire problem. The first four are for solving the empirical formula. And then once we've done that, we can go ahead and use this fifth step to solve for the molecular formula. So our first is to assume that percents are grams, or we change percent to mass, okay? So right here, 
we've changed 82.7% to 82.7 grams and then 17.3 to 17.3 grams. So that was step one. We're just changing. We're taking away the percent sign and putting and in grams. grams. That's it. Assume, yeah. Then our next is to convert grams to moles. Now we know how to do that using dimensional analysis in Mole Island. So for right here, we did this one already. 82.7 grams divided by the molar mass. Grams cancel out. 6.89 moles of carbon. Hydrogen's molar mass is 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen for every one mole of hydrogen. And that gives us 17, if you put it in on your calculator, 17, whoa, 17.1, 17 thank you, 17.1 moles of hydrogen. Okay, that was step two. Third step is divide all by the smallest number. So divide by small. 6.89 is smaller than 17.01. Now, the reason that we do this is because if we just use this to determine our empirical formula, it would be C, 6.89H, 17.01. Now, you guys have been around long enough that you know that that's not how we're going to write a formula. So, we first end up dividing by small. So, it's 6.89. We divide both by 6.89. Plug that into your calculator. And we get, notice it's, we're not canceling any moles. You end up with one, obviously, one mole of carbon for every 2.48 moles, 2.48 moles of hydrogen, okay, which is about 2.5 moles of hydrogen. Again, we're still not done because it's not a C1H2.48. Again, does not work. So what we do is we multiply all by the same number until they're all whole numbers. So in this case, we're going to multiply both by 2. And so that equals 2 moles of carbon and 5 moles of hydrogen. Our final molecular or empirical formula is C2H5. Now this is our empirical formula. Remember, it's our lowest possible ratio. And we're trying to also solve for our molecular formula, which is what our molecule actually is. So these last two, or this last step is how we do that. Okay. So um, the last step is to solve for the molecular formula. And all we do is take the empirical formula and multiply it by n. But we don't know what n is. n is equal to the molar mass of the molecule, which was given to us in the problem, divided by the empirical formula molar mass. Okay, so I can calculate the empirical formula molar mass, 5 hydrogens, 1.01 .01 carbon, 12.01, and I get 29.07, 29.07 grams per mole. Okay, that is my empirical formula molar mass, if you calculate it using your periodic table. Now, N, yeah, could you go ahead and write, can we? N, I take my, molecule, my molar mass of my molecule, which remember was given to me in my, the given, and I divide that by my new found grams per mole, and I get about two. About two. Okay, so that's what N is equal to. And then I take my empirical formula and I multiply all of my subscripts by 2. So I multiply the whole thing. So I do C times 2 is 4. H times 5 is, I mean, <laughs> 5 times 2 for H is 10. So really, this is the molecule that I end up with. This is my molecular formula. And this was my empirical formula. All right, we're going to do one more walk this through kind of a little bit quicker now that you know how to do this. Um, so I have over here our steps. I like to do a little rhyme because I think it makes it a little easier. We wrote out the steps for you, but this is a shortened ver version. Percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by small, multiply to whole. We will make you say this over and over again in class till you know it. All right. So these are the steps we're going to use. We have a colorless liquid, 46.68% nitrogen, 
and 53.32% oxygen. The molar mass, which we will use when we get down here for the molecular formula, is 60.01 grams per mole. Right? We're going to find both the empirical and the molecular formulas. So I'm going to start with nitrogen. I have 46.68% nitrogen, but remember the first step is percent to mass, so I'm going to make this grams. For oxygen, it's 53.32. I meant to agree. 53.32 percent, but I'm going to make this mass, so, so it's you grams. Want to put oxygen. Oh, gosh, sorry. Oxygen. <laughs> I didn't even realize. My students will get me for that one. <laughs> All right. So, percent to mass, done. Now we need to go mass to moles. Okay, so we know that the grams has to go on the bottom for both of these. The molar mass of nitrogen. 14.01 grams of nitrogen for every one mole of nitrogen. For oxygen, we know that the molar mass is 16.00 grams of oxygen for every mole of oxygen. All right? So do the math in, the, in your calculator, and you get 3.33 moles of nitrogen. And for oxygen, you get something very similar. 3.333 moles of oxygen. Why the difference in sig figs? I only have why the difference in sig figs. Because this is me writing incorrectly. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so these are the same, right? We're still not going to write N3.333, O3.333, right? So we need to divide by the smallest. Well, they're the same number, so it doesn't really matter. They're both the same. But we're still going to divide both by 3.333. And we get one mole of nitrogen and one mole of oxygen. Okay? So, percent to mass, mass to moles, we divide it by small. All right? Now, multiply to a whole. We don't need to. These are already whole numbers. So we don't have to do that last step. All we need to do is write our empirical formula, NO. All right? Now that we have the empirical formula, all right, we can find the molar mass of the empirical formula. Right? And because you guys already know how to do this, I'm just writing it in. 30.01 grams per mole. All right, we're going to use that. So if we're looking over there at there our molecular steps, we need to figure out N. Right? Because ultimately, we need to multiply our empirical formula, NO, by the value that we get for N. All right, so the molecular molar mass, 60.01 grams per mole. 30.01. And the empirical molar mass, 30.01 grams per mole. And we divide. 60.01 divided by 30.01 gives us about 2. Right? So same end that we got for the last one. It's not always going to be 2. Right? And the last step is we take our NO, multiply it by 2, and we get, what do we get? N2, O2. And that's our molecular formula. We have lots of practice for you in class. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.